Okay, I believe we are live. We are. Okay, so when you are here, say hello. I can see you guys on my my phone. I'm gonna go ahead and share my uh, my screen. Okay. We get to my slides. Okay, so when you're here, say hello, and then we'll get rocking and rolling. Okay, play. Awesome. Okay. So my screen is shared. At first I was like, oh no, the system Zoom was giving me a little bit of a hard time. And um, I remembered, okay, when this happened the last time, I called Zoom after and they said, just clear the cookies and the history and all that stuff. So that's what I did and it worked. So yay, here we are. Awesome. Thank you guys for coming. And those of you that are watching the replay, when you uh, end up watching the replay, please put hashtag replay. So let's get rocking and rolling. So again, thank you for taking the time. Hope, hope that you are getting a lot of value out of this. I've been really enjoying doing this presentation, this challenge for you, um, educating, teaching, um, hoping that you're applying some of the knowledge that you're learning. And the most important thing is that you are actually thinking before you're doing. You know, part of part of what I'm helping you with is um, you know, coming out of the autopilot and, and out of your old beliefs and things, you know? So um, this presentation today is, um, I think you'll get a lot of value. I'm hoping that you relate to it. Um, it's actually pretty personal. Um, and um, so let's get going. So here we are, day four, balance your hormones for fat loss challenge. Oops, I went backwards again. <laughs> Oops. All right, here we go. Um, so day four. I'm going to talk about your current reality and what we're going to dive deep into is your truth and your reality because I'm going to share with you some of my truths and my reality, my past reality and my current reality. <clears throat> so um, just want to briefly touch on this, your autonomic nervous system. You know, we teeter totter with this all day long, which is your sympathetic and your parasympathetic. Now the sympathetic is your fight or flight. So that's, that's the mode that we put our body in. Um, we can also call it metabolic tension, or we can also uh, talk about the fact that sometimes we are intentionally putting our body in that mode as far as exercise goes. So I was just at my strong class. It was a hard one. Um, heart rate was very, heart rate was extremely accelerated lots of heavy breathing. So I was definitely in sympathetic, which means stress mode. Okay. So always think S for stress. Then there's the parasympathetic, which is your rest and digest, which means your, your peace mode. Okay. So, which I had mentioned yesterday or two days ago, I had talked about how when you um, are having uh, such an intense workout, such as that, the best thing to do would be to what? trigger the insulin so that you can tell the body, hey, I would really like to build some of this muscle. So what I did was I had a banana, was able to quickly eat that, right? So again, these are affected all day long. And again, regarding the sympathetic, what you eat or don't eat, you know, is going to affect these. Your lack of sleep will definitely affect it. Um, the type of exercise and even your thoughts and thinking. And we're going to talk a little bit about that tonight as well. So moving on here. So some of you may be familiar with this slide. Some of you may be not, but this is definitely something that I talk a lot about. And this is something that um, definitely needs to be, uh, their awareness needs to be created about this. 
because this is where most people are living, which is in between phase one and three. And what I mean by this is this here is called the emotional cycle of change. And this is not something that I created. This is something that I had um, gotten from the 12 week year. You may have heard me talk about this, but when I heard this, this resonated with me so much. And I was like, holy shit, I've lived half my life between phase one and three. Whenever anything got uncomfortable, I did the U-turn at phase three, and then I would start over and I was, I would be back at phase one. Now, some people might might you know go as far as uh, you know phase two or three might be just a few days after they started something new some people it might be a couple weeks a few weeks couple months um but most of the world operates here okay this is that community of hey i fell off the wagon you know oh you too me too and then they're continuously going from phase one to three so let me talk about this a little bit more in depth so this to me is what I would say is the catalyst to the start over syndrome, you know? So phase one is that dopamine hit. I always call it the dopamine hit because, you know, that's what you're getting excited. Like, yes, I'm starting something new. And all you're thinking about is your transformation and the end result. You're not thinking about the journey in between. You're not thinking about like, this is where I am. This is where I want to be. And there's this gap in between and we need to close that gap. But, you know, you got to walk through you got to walk through it. And sometimes it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be comfortable. And it, that's what I call the uncomfortable hallway. So phase one, you're excited. Um, phase two, that's when you start to question yourself, you know, generally, like for me, the life that I used to live, that would come around every Thursday night, I would start to get my urge for my party and for the weekend. Is it really worth it? Do I really want to go through this? You know, am I really that, that bad off? Because I had this rule book and these restrictions that I was living my life in, there was no wiggle room for any sort of flexibility. It was just, I was all in or all off. And I was either a perfect or a shit show. And so that this area is where people start to get stuck because then they start to think and then they start to talk themselves into, you know, well, maybe not. And then they talk to their girlfriend and the girlfriend who wants them to, you know, maybe not proceed with what they're doing or maybe wants them to come along to the social situation that they know that, you know, they are going to have a hard time setting boundaries with. They're going to talk them into, you know, what? just screw it you don't want to stress about it just have a good time and you know we'll start over together on monday you know how many times have you done that i used to live my life like that constantly that's how, that's where i lived i i lived between phase one and three and then i would be looking around going why is it that other people are achieving such great things in their life well because they were never starting over you know they would go through phase one they would get to phase two, which is, you know, that, okay, this is tough. This is, you know, I'm starting to recognize that there are going to be some difficult moments here. And then, you know, but they just keep going They're They keep moving toward their, their goal instead of turning around and moving away from the pain that they have to walk through. Right. And then they go to phase, they get to phase three, which is the valley of despair. Right. And most people turn around. It gets a little bit too uncomfortable. Well, you know, fuck this. This isn't for me. I didn't lose 10 pounds in two days. So what else do you got? What pills and elixirs and, you know, you know, um, uh, things can I do that's going to give me that instant gratification? Cause I don't want to do the work and I don't want to get uncomfortable. Sound familiar? I did it. Trust me. I lived my life like that for many, 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 many years. I had drawers full of supplements because it was the next best thing. Right. But here's the thing. And I'm going to share with you some pictures of me. Um, and it's just mainly of my face because they tell the story. I don't need to show you my body or anything like that because the food that I was eating, the way that I was living, the, 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 the lack of sleep and, you know, all of the indulgences that I was doing, you're going to see that on my face. But once I, once I decided that I had had enough of living between one and three, it was just not where I wanted to be. I knew that I could do and be better. And once I recognized that, and I actually walked through my valley of despair, that's when I realized like, holy shit, that's so much better over here. And that's one of the reasons why the Metabolism Reboot Academy was born. That's why I created my academy because I thought, you know what? I know that I'm not the only one suffering with this. I know that it's not just me. I know that I'm not alone. So here is a picture of me. So I'm sharing with you this, like I said, it's kind of personal. This is me. And I think my head is over top of, it says Kelly 2016. 
<laughs> but that's me back in 2016. That is basically, so you would not see that on Facebook. That was me every weekend. You know, I would, um, you know, I was always on the diet. I'll just go down the list. You know, I was always on the diet. The exercise more, eat less was my main go-to. It was, I was into the quick fixes, the pills, the shakes, you know, and again, I, I had lived a life of fitness and wellness, right? I was a personal trainer, but you know, I was always the one with the drink in the hand and every picture on fucking Facebook, you know, but people related to that, right? You know, all of my clients were just like me. They were always starting over. Um, I, uh, the way that I lived, my choices felt restricted. I struggled with social situations and setting boundaries. People knew that, you know, they, they could just say, shove something in my face and I would say, oh, okay, I'll just start over tomorrow or Monday. Whenever I would indulge, I would have the food guilt of being bad, the low vibration thinking, because let's face it, that's what comes with it. When you're eating like shit, you're feeling like shit, and there, that's where your vibration is going to go. You're going to be a part of the bottom feeder, okay? Bottom feeder community is what I call it. Constantly on and off the diet wagon, always starting over, never moving forward in life, ever. I was repeating the same fucking story every single year. Nothing was changing. Nothing. It was painful. You know, my life was the same as my, my comrades, my best friends. They were all moving in life. They were all writing a whole different story. And there I was in the same story over and over and over again. And a lot of it had to do with because I was more obsessed about my weight and my eating and things like that. I was just a dead fish in the water going with the flow. Nothing was changing. So I did, however, have this burning belly syndrome that I call it. I knew that there was something inside of me, that there was something in within me that I needed to tap into, but I just didn't know what it was. I didn't know what I needed to learn. I didn't know what I didn't know. I was always sliding in between the phases one and three, I was always inflamed, puffy, and achy because of the foods that I was eating. My gut health was fucked up and dysfunctional, and so was I. So I was constantly in fight or flight mode, damaging my metabolism. So, you know, you might look at this and say, oh my God, I, I cannot relate to this. Or you might look at this and say, holy crap, you know, this is me, this was me. Or you could look at this and say, I don't want this to be me. And I don't want this to be you either. This might very well be you, or you might know somebody that's like this. You know, I don't know. So moving on. So again, going back to this emotional cycle of change, you know, half of my life was spent between one and three. Finally walked through my valley of despair. I faced my truths. I got honest with myself. I looked in the mirror that day, literally took a picture. And I said, this looks like a fucking mug shot. Like how awful. You know, this is not you. This is not who you want to be. And that's when everything changed. Like, that's when I decided that this is too, this, I'm sick of this. I'm so sick of this. I was over it and I didn't want to feel that way anymore. So that's when I decided to really start digging into things. And that's when I, you know, started looking into like the whole thyroid stuff. And that's when I landed upon my mentor. And then I started getting certified through him and educating myself on hormones and food and how I could reverse. I could re I could reverse an age. I could reverse myself. I could, I could now move into the Valley of Despair. I can be a success story. I can be on that other side. Over here, phase one through three, I, I just, I don't want to be there ever again. I, it's interesting because I actually just did a podcast. I recorded a podcast about this, that, you know, there's times I don't even recognize my new self because I was so, there was such be, you know, behaviors and patterns that were just hardcore in my mind that I lived and operated under, you know, it was my, my operating system. So moving forward. So here we are. This is me now. Look at the difference. Isn't that crazy? Look at my skin. So the first picture, crazy biofeedback. Look at those puffy bags under my eyes. Look at my face looks like it's melting. You know what I'm saying? And then when you look at this, vibrant, and if I must say so myself, you know, it's, it's a big, big difference, you know, and this all has to do with the lifestyle, the way that I was living. 
and actually tapping into understanding my body and the foods that speak well to me. I feel in alignment. I feel balanced. My, my hormones are balanced. My gut health is better. I am never achy or I am never inflamed. Now, if you are feeling achy and crickety and you use the excuse or tell yourself it's, oh, I'm just getting old. That's not normal. That is inflammation. Okay. Inflammation is basically biofeedback and it's something that's telling your body, Hey, let's not have that. Okay. So I know that if I am achy or inflamed, I know to expect it because I now know what foods, what behaviors, what way of, of living creates the achiness and inflammation. Now, if you've been following me, you, you know, I'm very vulnerable about it and very honest about like, oh, you know, I had, you know, such and such, um, like, where did I go? I think I went to a concert and I had, um, Oh, I had some bread and a Corona or something. And then I, I had literally those puffy pockets for like 10 days and was just sharing like, this is the biofeedback from the food, you know, but I knew that there was a possibility that it was going to happen. So when you know that it's going to happen, you're able to, you know, uh, move forward and not wrap into that whole, I'm going to go start over again. And I'm a loser and all that thinking, thinking. I feel comfortable with setting boundaries. This is a huge thing for most people. There, you know, you end up, listen, when I, why I'm sharing this, you guys, is because you think that what you need is just to lose weight and change your eating habits. But what I am here to tell you is that you need to change your habits. You need to change your thinking. You need to change everything. It's all encompassing. This all ties in together. It all ties in together. Now, I know I might sound like I'm being stern and, you know, but... I just know this so much to be true. I've seen it myself. I'm a living byproduct of it. And I help my clients do the same thing. When you get to this point where you're on that success side, setting boundaries is a no brainer. Saying no is a no brainer. It doesn't feel uncomfortable anymore. I live a life according to my own personal preferences, meaning that I eat what I want to eat without anybody making me feel stupid or that I am an oddball out. You know, how many times have you been around people and they naysay you because you're eating healthy and they're over there eating like shit? The only reason why they're doing it and pointing you out is because they know that that they that you are doing something that they should be and they are not. Okay. So I'm mindful of my choices, yet I'm at peace with my indulgences. I, I'm living a life beyond the valley of despair. I'm over in the success side. Never in my life did I ever think that I could run two businesses, educate, you know, go and uh, educate myself. Last year, I have earned over, I think it was seven or eight different um, certificates of education. Now, if I were living the life and running my life under the habits that I was before, between between uh, phases one and three, that would have never happened, ever. And I'm not sitting here trying to doot doot, but I'm just trying to tell you that it's it's that behavior that is your anchor in your ass and that is holding you back. Okay, it's that constant starting over. It's holding you back, not only in your physical desire, but it's affecting your personal and professional life too. Okay. Um, higher vibration thinking possibilities are all around. Now, mind you, I've got my days too. I get my stinking thinking and I'm like, wait a minute. Blah, 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 blah. You know, I got to get rid of that old thought, you know, um, and living a life moving forward, continuing to achieve goals other than diet goals. When you're so obsessed over diet goals, because you think that that's the way to your promised land, nothing else there's no other focus and it becomes this heavy weight in your brain. It's the, it's an awful way of living. It sucks, doesn't it? So if you can resonate with this, give me a one. If this is like way off into like, yeah, I'm not following you here. Give me a two. Okay. So give me a one. If you're like, okay, I can relate to this. Give me a two. If this is like, yeah, we're not, we're not on the same page here. So this way of living is more so in your rest, digest, in alignment with keeping your metabolism in a good, healthy place, okay? 
so good. I'm glad that I'm that I'm speaking to you here. Okay. All right. Now, so which Kelly can you relate to right now? Meaning, if you were to, if if I were to say, are you more like the Kelly in 2016? Give me a 16. If you are more like the Kelly in 2019, give me a 19. Okay. So if you are more like the Kelly in 2016, right now, give me a 16. If you're more like the Kelly in 2019, give me a 19. Okay. So just kind of tell me like where you are right this very moment. Okay. Good. Okay. So keep those numbers coming. All right. Very cool. Thank you for your honesty as well. Okay. So here we go. So would you agree or disagree with me that you are being held back from something, whether it be a goal, whether it be getting out of a relationship, whether it be leaving the job that you fucking hate, but you just don't feel that you're worthy enough or have the confidence to do it. Do you have that feeling that, that you're meant for something better? Do you have that burning belly? You know, I call it the burning belly, which means that you know that there is a desire. You know that there is something there that you were meant for, but you just can't put your finger on it. But you just keep living in this, this loop here, this little old bell, just going back and forth. Wah, 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 wah. And so if you feel like you um, do have that kind of sense Give me a yes. I would like to hear that. I would like to know. Okay. All right. So now we're going to, we're going to talk a little bit about what is going on in your mind. Yes. Awesome. Very cool. Yep. So we're going to talk about, this is an NL, this is the NLP model. Okay. NLP stands for Neuro Linguistic Programming. And this just means the language of your mind. And I am an NLP coach, and this is something that I work heavily on in my program, and I work with my clients on. Now, what I want you to understand is that, first of all, your subconscious mind is about seven years old. So from where you were at age zero, or even while you were in the womb, all the way up to about age seven is when your beliefs were starting to be created. Okay. So like, for example, my daughter is almost two years old. So one day my husband, not to down him, but this is just a great example because you don't know what you don't know. He said to my daughter, look at that fat little belly. Look at that fat little belly. Now he thinks that that's cute talk. It's, you know, whatever. And he's just being sweet to her. But in her subconscious mind, what is being created is a belief. I have a fat little belly. Now, you might think I'm crazy, but that belief is going to carry on with her if he continued to say that to her as she was a grown adult. So the first thing I said to him was, you need to stop that like right now. And he kind of looked at me and I said, you just don't say that. And I had to kind of explain to him because he doesn't have this, that education, right? So I had to explain to him this. Here's the thing. When we were younger, and trust me, now that I understand my mind and my operating system, and, and now that I'm able to see my parents and the influential adults that I have been around, I understand where some of my beliefs and some of my fucked up beliefs came from, you know? And so what, what, we, are around, what we are around and what we are continuously told is what becomes our truth and what becomes our first belief, our truth, and then our fact, okay? And so... What I want to explain to you here is we all have filters. We all have the same, um, we all have the same um, filtering system, but according to our specific lifestyle and how we were raised, for example, or the life that we live, we could look at the same external event. So let's say, for example, I was standing side by side with my son, Colin, and we witnessed an accident, a very tragic accident. According to my belief system and my, uh, my filters, 
okay? Because we have the visual, the auditory, the kinesthetic, which is the feeling, the olfactory and gustatory, which is smell and taste. We also then take it through our deletions, distortions, and generalizations. So if you were to ask two individuals, if you took my son and me into two separate rooms, you're going to get two very different stories because of our filtering system that we have going on, because of the way that we are operating in our subconscious mind. Now, I don't want to get too deep here, but what I'm trying to share with you, my friend, is that some of the way that you are operating today, like this 2016 Kelly, not to place blame anywhere, but I know that some of those behaviors were learned. I know that some of those behaviors were beliefs that were carried on from when I was young. You know, and like I said, I'm not blaming anybody. It's just the fact that it's the truth, right? So we have the external event. So let's say, for example, I don't know, you're driving in your car. Let's just make it something simple. So you're driving in your car and, you know, somebody in front of you cuts you off. Then you have this deletion, distortion, generalization that goes through your mind. And then it goes through your other filters, which is your values, your belief systems, your decisions, and your all your memories. Then what's going to happen is you're going to create an internal representation, which is like a little movie. Okay. And then what happens there is then a physiological, or um, excuse me, your uh, a state of mind is then created. So your whole physiology is affected. Okay. So it then creates your state of mind. Your state of mind does what? Your state of mind affects your behaviors. Your behaviors then affect your choices. Okay. So at the end of the day, what I'm trying to tell you is this. Some of what you have going on is an operating system in the back of your mind and in your subconscious that either you created or, like I said, could have been developed between the age zero and seven. Um, you know, and so it's very crucial and important that you understand that the work is not just on a conscious level. It's not just, oh, okay, let me just watch um, what I'm eating and, you know, let me kind of listen to my body and all of that. It's also what's going on in this mind. I always tell people what your outward appearance is, is a manifestation of what's going on in here. If you think that you don't have mind work to do, then I'm sorry to tell you that nothing is ever going to change. You are always going to be stuck right where you are. You might find your little moments of, I've changed, and then you go right back to where you were. How many times have you lost weight, gained weight, lost weight, gained weight, lost weight, gained weight, lost weight, gained weight? Why do you think that is? It's because your behaviors and your operating system has not been changed. You have to change your operating system, period. Now, you can ask any of my clients when they begin working with me, you know, one of the biggest things that we focus on at first is their head. What is going on up here? Because if we don't focus on this shit, we're in trouble. It's going to be a temporary thing. And that's where the whole supplementation, you know, all of that stuff. So you kind of understand here, is anybody having some aha moments here? So if this is making sense to you, give me a yes. If this sounds like, oh my God, I'm so confused and give me, I'm confused. <laughs> all right. So looking for your feedback on that. I'll give you just a moment. So, you know, that really is my presentation tonight is really explaining to you that this goes way deeper than just counting calories and, you know, the food choices and things like that. This has to do with behaviors. This has to do with it's some deep shit. Okay. And this is why I became an NLP coach because I knew that if I really wanted to make an impact on people's lives, that I had to get this training 
that I had to understand the mind. I had to understand the subconscious ways of thinking. I had to understand the triggers, the habit loops, the belief system, all of that. Because the way that you're operating in your life is your truth. It's your fact. It's your way. So kind of like when you have somebody that, that, that has this way about them and they give you this, well, that's just the way it is. It's my way or the fucking highway. It's because in their mind, it is the way that it is to them. It is their fact and their truth. The problem is, is that they're placing expectations on other people, which is really asinine, <laughs> you know? And so I always say to people, listen, you know what? Don't ever place expectations on people because you will be let down every time. Nor would you want somebody placing expectations on you, okay? So I hope that this presentation made sense. If you have questions, I will hang out here for a couple of more minutes. Um, but I really, really, you know, it was interesting because this presentation was going to go in a different direction today, but something told me that I needed to share a little bit more about me. And I don't want it to make it about me, 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 look at me. That's not, that's not the message that I'm trying to relay here. What I'm trying to share with you is that I am you. I am you, you know, and um, I've ju I'm just a couple of steps ahead, you know, and so I just wanted to share that I've walked the walk. I've been through it. I've gained and lost weight many times in my life. You know, I, I think it was 50 pounds in high school that I gained. And then I gained another 50, 50 to 60 pounds with each pregnancy, you know? And so it's like, oh, you know, I've gone through it many, many times, but not only that, just, just all the crazy thinking from my destructive ways you know, in, in the past and such. So, okay. So I don't see any questions here. I'll give it just another minute. If there's anything that you'd like to share, any comments or anything, um, again, any questions, <laughs> but if there is something that comes up after the fact, or if you would like to share anything with me, but it's on a more personal level and you want to chat about it, you know, feel free to private message me. I'm totally open to that. Um, love to hear from you. So I'm going to wait on my clock. It says 8.06. I'm going to wait until it says 8.07. And then I'm going to wrap it up. So awesome. All right. So I'm just looking here and seeing that, um, that this speaks to you, resonates with you. That's cute. Lisa. <laughs> she says I'm a little in between. <laughs> I love it. Awesome. Okay, very cool. So it's 807. So thanks again for your time, you guys. Um, tomorrow is the, our last day. So I will be seeing you tomorrow. Um, I know last year, let me ask you this question. I know last year what I did was instead of Friday night, I did Saturday morning. Um, only because it being Friday night, Friday nights are usually family nights and that kind of thing. Um, what would you prefer? Because um just give me a Saturday or a Friday if you prefer. Like if we did Saturday, it would probably have to be like 8.30 or probably want 8.30 is probably when I'd have to do it because I go to the gym. I do a 10 o'clock class. So um, what would you prefer, Friday or Saturday? And then what I'll do is I'll put a poll in the group asking everybody to. Now, the last time, the reason why I did it is because my presentations are pretty much twice as long and people were getting behind. But this this time I've been very, very diligent making sure that it's just like a half hour or so. Okay, so Saturday, awesome. Yeah, uh, awesome, Lisa. So Lisa says, thank you for sharing such personal things. It really shows us that you've been where we are, have been. You're very welcome. Okay, awesome. Okay, so, so far Saturday seems to be the go-to. I'll make, um, I'll do a poll also, but I have a feeling that that's probably gonna be everybody else's as well. So thanks again for tuning in. I'm really grateful for you. And um, again, I look forward to hearing from you. Please, you know, let me know what your biggest takeaways are and we'll talk to you soon. Good night. <laughs>